All right. Um, now that you kind of know a little bit of source control background and you know kind of run the same path on source control, let me just give you a quick kind of demonstration of what we can do with an ALM process. And then once you have like the overview of ALM, we can go back and talk about the intricacies of just source control. So in SSMS, you guys are used to seeing these golden databases here. Well, I have a green database right here, and that green database tells me that that database is actually under source control. So that's a, that's a good thing, right? So this source control database one has a bunch of tables in it. Let me just um, refresh those. And I've got customers table, employees table, vendors table, right? So in my vendors table, if I right click and I have a design, oh, vendors only has one column in it. Well, I can say, give me vendor name, give me vendor, give me address. So the, I just add, you know, three basic columns to that table. Maybe this needs to be a primary key. Maybe that primary key needs identity. Hey, oh, it's not, it's an in char. It needs to be an int. Sorry. All right. So I go ahead and save that. When I save that to the vendors table, I'll get the little like globe here that you see down here. Sometimes it takes a little bit to show up, but that little globe tells me that I've uncommitted changes here, um, just like it does in Subversion, just like it does in TFS. So what I can do is I can right click on source control and I can commit my changes to source control. Oh, see the little globe? It, it pinpointed the vendors table as the one that has changes to commit, right? So I right click and I say, please commit my changes to source control. And I say, adding columns to vendors table. You can see down here under the highlight, it tells me what changed that vendors table, right? It said, oh, he changed some data types. He added some columns, you know, it looks good. So I can just go ahead and click commit. And now those changes, oh, I'm acknowledging the fact that um, I might have to rebuild the table. And now those changes get pushed up to source control. Okay. Now, if I'm another developer, like I'm on source control two, and I open up tables, and I open up customers. No, it's not customers, it was vendors, right? And I go to columns, I still only have sys ID. So pretend I'm a different developer, and Alan says, hey, if you want the changes to the vendors table, um, get latest. And so I'm like, oh yeah, I want those changes. So I right click, and I just get latest. And it says, oh, yeah, there's some vendors update here. If you want it, go ahead and run it. And so I say, yeah, I do want it. So I click the Get Latest button. And it said, oh, acknowledge that I'm rebuilding a table. Sure, that's fine. Um, and I acknowledge. It rebuilds a table. It pushes the changes down. And now as a developer, if I right-click on my columns and I hit Refresh, I get Alan's changes down automatically without Alan having to email script to me, without you know, me wondering if this is really right, you know, it just comes down automatically to me. So you can see already, like, I've got some good benefit here already for code sharing. In addition, if I right click on the vendors table and I click view history, it'll show me how this thing has changed over time. So on commit two, that's the initial commit of the vendors table, on commit 16, it added some columns here. So there's some power here to see the history of how our objects are changing over time. Okay. Now I also have a CI server. And let me show you my CI server. I'm using Team City. So my Team City installation is localhost 8081. And I log into it. And it says, hey, you have a project. Let's go ahead and click on that project a little bit. And I can click on the project settings here. And it will show me a little bit about the project. Now, this isn't a Team City course, right? I'm not trying to like teach you everything there is to know about Team City. Um, I'm just giving you an overview on, on an ALM process so that you know what the different components are. So don't get too hung up on what's happening here. Um, but one, it's wired directly in to my version control system. So right now, it's wired into my version control is subversion. That's, see how it's type of version control is subversion? 
and it knows it can pull the latest code out of Subversion using that URL, that username, and my password. Okay. Um, it also, uh, uh, I also have um, some build steps. And uh oh, let me edit configuration. Okay. Underneath build configurations, I can click here. And this build configuration has some build steps in it. Before we talk about the build steps, look at the trigger. It says, please launch all the build after a version control system check-in. So when I check in to Subversion, the Team City server detects that check-in and then does a couple of things for me. And it can do anything. If I click on build step and I add a build step, my build steps can be a .NET process. It can be a command line. It can be um, you know, an MS build step. It can run MS tests. It can run all my MS tests. It can install NuGet packages. But on the Redgate side, it can build, test, and deploy. And so if I click on build, I get some options here where it says, oh, do you want to just compile this database and make sure all the objects run? And I can say, yes, go ahead and build and make sure the objects run. Use this SQL server as a temporary location to get the build finished. And it will use that SQL server for doing that. Um, if I don't want to do build, but instead I want to do test, it'll go into a database in source control, if it's in source control, and it will run all of my database tests for me automatically. If they all pass, green, fine. If one, of them, one or more of them fails, red, and it emails everybody and says the test broke. Um, and you need to go back and do some more automated testing. We'll talk about automated testing in just a moment. Um, and I can also sync. And what sync does is it says, go into Subversion, grab the database, and then automatically deploy it um, to the target. And so here's the target database, and it will automatically do that. So if we see my build steps, what I have is a build, which it says, go into the database crafting, that's the project ID, and build it on the localhost server. And it also has sync. And it says, take whatever thing you find in database, in that source control one database, and deploy it to UAT here. All right. Now, you saw my build trigger happened out of source control automatically. You saw that I would build, and you saw that I would sync in UAT automatically. Let me show you that. So here I am in SSMS. This database is CI Demo UAT. When I open it up, I have a vendors table. When I open it up, those are the columns you watched me make. Now, you did not see me move those columns automatically over to UAT. The Team City server kicked off a build off that build trigger and deployed those columns over there automatically and would even send an email out to people saying, there are new features ready for test in UAT. If you want to go test them, you can. Without the developer doing a single thing about it, that happened automatically. So you watch this happen. This just happened to you. The way I can prove that it happened to you is, if I go back to my projects, see that number 17 success? Um, I can click the build log, and you can see that happened at 2.40 my time, which was when I was making those changes. And you can see it hit the build step, and the build succeeded, and it hit the sync step, and the sync succeeded. And that happened just today, just now. Cool, huh? There's a lot of power here, right? And you could see how quickly and easily it would be to deploy these things into production once the users went into UAT and tested everything and said everything was great, right? Someone's typing. Alan's typing. Doing it to integrate with TFS. Yeah, so it does integrate with TFS. Yeah, you're just seeing it with Subversion and Team City, but this is all easily done using TFS or Git or Cruise Control or Jenkins or Hudson or you know any of the build and source control products. Mercurial, Perforce, it works with all of those things. Yep, a lot of different products. All right, so let's talk more about source control for just a second. So what I want to do, and bear with me because I just kind of thought that I wanted to do it, 
is I want to I want to come back here on my source control tab. And oh, it's not here. Oh, notice that my UAT database is not in source control. We do that is not a development database, and it does not belong in source control. Um, the CI server deploys to it, but it is not part of our dev process. It's part of our testing and um, strategy, right? 